Hey, welcome to Healthy Hearing Loss. My name is Dee Dee. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be a host on the show and we're going to interview a panel of medical providers who use a digital or a electronic stethoscope. And they're going to tell us whether they, they use a T-coil or they use a Bluetooth. We'll be covering two different brands. We'll be covering the Lipman Core Digital Stethoscope as well as the Echo Core Attachment and the Think Labs One Digital Stethoscope. In order to keep the stethoscope in the setup pretty easy for you to understand, we're going to separate the panelists into two teams. We're going to have a team of members who use T-coil and a team of members who use Bluetooth. We also have judges on the sideline over here who are going to watch, listen, and tell us at the very end of the video which one they think is the best. So they're actually going to be voting and we will announce the winner at the end of a video. We will return after this. Hey, welcome back. We're going to be interviewing medical professionals on which stethoscope they use. All the members have severe to profound hearing loss. They all wear behind the ear hearing aids and they will tell you which brand they're using throughout the interview. If you do not know the difference between a T-coil and a Bluetooth hearing aid, then I suggest you go and watch the videos that Healthy Hearing Loss created for medical providers. I'll link it here. Be best if you watch that before you watch this interview you'll have a better understanding. Now let's go ahead and do the panel introductions. We're going to start off with you. Hi, thank you, Dee Dee. My name is Echo T. Coyle, and I will be talking about the Echo attachment that connects to my Litman Cardiology 3. Okay, thank you very much. All right, and you. Thank you, Dee Dee. My name is Think T. Coyle, and I'm going to be sharing my experience with the Think Lab 1 digital stethoscope. Awesome, thank you. Okay, in you. Thank you, Dee Dee. My name is Core Blue, and I'm going to share my experience with the Litman Core Digital Stethoscope. In your turn. Thank you, Dee Dee. So my name is Think Blue, and I'm going to show you the Think Lab stethoscope and show you how I used it. Judges, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Joe. I, I don't I don't know why I'm here. I'm not even sure I know where I am. Hi, my name is Mike, and I'm here today because my wife told me to do this. Okay, judges, please listen to the panel and decide which setup you like the best. And you will be doing a voting at the end of the video and telling us who the winner is out of all these stethoscopes and setup, okay? Okay, great. Thank you all for being here and taking time out of your busy day. We really, really appreciate it. I have a few questions that I'm going to ask each panelist to answer through throughout the interview. The following questions are gonna be, which hearing aids are you wearing? And what stethoscope setup do you use in clinical practice? And then finally, I'd like you to share your pros and cons of your stethoscope of choice. And some of the things that I'd like you to cover is wearability, connectivity, charging and battery life, how is it in noisy environment, and versatility. And also go ahead and explain the cost so that we can educate the viewers. So I'm going to answer those questions that I know we have them written right here on the iPad that we all have. And the first question is, what hearing aids are you using? Well, I use the Phonics Cross 2. It has a in the canal hearing aid on the right side connected to behind hearing aid as well. I have a transmitter on this side, which takes all the sound from this side and brings it to my right ears. I get all my sound in one ear. It only has T-coil. I had to ask my audiologist to activate it. It does not have Bluetooth. What setup do you use in clinical practice? I use a Phonic 2 Compilot because it connects to a Phonic hearing aid. I connect it to my T-coil from my hearing aid to the streamer, the Compilot 2 streamer, and then it connects to my phone to the Echo app. Now I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of the Echo Core attachment. The first thing 
is wearability. It can go around my neck just like this. I've connected it to my cardiology two, or actually cardi cardiology three stethoscope. I like it like this so that I can just kind of hang it here and I always know it's with me. And it does make me look more like a medical professional. I can also disconnect the tubing that goes to the ear and carry this directly in my lab coat pocket if I want to. That's a pro. I do have two ways of actually connecting to this and carrying it around my neck in my pocket. If I were to say a con with wearability is that it is bulky. It's very big. It's kind of awkward. Put it in my pocket seems a little strange. It is a heavy stethoscope. So having it around my neck all day does get heavy over time. Connectivity and I know that we're, you know, we're putting up a scale on the screen, right? Yeah. So if you look on the scale, it's a three out of five satisfaction. So that's, you know, not great. The thing is, is that, you know, it connects right to my phone, no problem, most of the time. But, you know, to in order to connect, I have to have my phone. So that's a con. Charging in battery life, I think it's four out of five. I mean, most of the stuff that I have to charge, charge the Echo, I charge my phone, and I charge my stethoscope. They all last, you know, for at least a day or two. The phone always have to charge it, but yeah, I would say a good 24 hours I can get out of all these three things. One of the cons to that is that I have to charge three things. There's a lot of stuff to charge. <laughs> in a noisy environment, I have found that I've only used this really in the clinic. I have tried it outside, but I didn't use it for very long. I was by a highway, so I didn't even bother trying to listen because no matter what stethoscope you use, it's, it's really hard to hear by a highway. I think it sounds okay, but I give it a three out of five because I just feel like noise does interfere. There's cancellation on the Echo app itself. You know, I, I guess I would have to play with, around with that more. Versatility. The fact that they don't have any options other than just using this to connect to the Echo app or any other way to put it to your ear, like this is the only option you have. Either you don't use this at all or you use this, that's it. You can't connect the earbuds, you can't connect to loudspeakers. I find that to be a con. They do have another option with you where you can get the ECG Duo, which can be a digital stethoscope on your iPhone, on your Echo app. The thing is, is that, you know, I still have to use the digital stethoscope through the phone, through the Bluetooth, through my streamers. I'm going to give that a two out of five. I think you mentioned also that you wanted me to talk about the cost. The iPhone, everybody should have an iPhone regardless. Um, the iPhone itself, I don't even remember how much this costs, a couple hundred bucks, I guess. The uh, Phonix Palm Pilot is about 250 My Litman stethoscope, I bought this particular one like 20 years ago, so it was probably about 100 to 200 bucks at that time. I don't know how much they are right now. And the Echo attachment that I bought was 199 I don't think that's too bad. If you already have a stethoscope, this is pretty good. Overall, the pros, wearability, eh, eh, eh. I would say a three out of five. Connectivity, three out of five. Charging battery life, four out of five. Noisy environment, three out of five. And the versatility, I would say it's a two out of five. So that's all I have, Didi. And I have an iPad just like Echo T-Coil has. What hearing aids are you using? Well, I use the same one as Echo T-Coil does too. I use the Phonic Cross hearing aid. So I have a hearing aid on the right ear and I have a transmitter on the left ear. And I've had my T-Coil activated on here since I've bought it. What setup do you use in clinical practice? Well, I use the hearing aid with a Phonic Compilot 2. I use a Audio 3.5 millimeter cable that connects from the Think Lab directly to the Think Lab itself. As you mentioned, Didi, we're going to have that satisfaction score on the screen. Okay, great. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the pros and cons of this stethoscope and my setup. Wearability, it's a five out of five. I love this thing. I It's very easy for me to put around my neck. It's really small. It's tiny. Yeah, there's a long cord, but I bought an extra long one because I wanted an extra long 
long one, that's okay. I can buy a shorter one if I want to. So I have the option of doing shorter or longer 3.5 millimeter cable if I want. I can take this from here and I can put this right into my lab coat pocket. It, it's so small, it's not bulky. It's not like the Echo attachment where it feels a little odd. It's just really small and tiny. I, I really love it. The reliability is awesome. Five out of five for sure. Connectivity, again, five out of five. Because it is a direct connection to the Think Lab, to my streamer, directly to my hearing aid, there is no delay. I can hear all the bodily sounds and there's no problem. Hot sounds, bowel sounds, lung sounds, and the blood pressure is spot on. No problem taking a blood pressure with this either. This is a really good stethoscope, five out of five for sure for connectivity. I have no cons for, for connectivity. Charging and battery life. This thing lasts a long time. It's a five out of five again because it will last for days for me. I mean, even on the website, when you look on the website, it's supposed to pretty charge charged up for 100 to 125 patient exams. I found that to be true. So I, I've actually gone almost a week without having to charge this. That was just by accident. I wouldn't do it too often because I don't want this to die on me. But it has a great battery life and it's super easy to charge in. It's just got a little, a little plug in there and you put it in with the adapter that comes with it and it's so easy. Very, very simple. So there's no cons there. For a noisy environment, I would say it would be a four out of five because there's no real cancellation on it, noise cancellation on it. One thing I have found with this is if I do press it up against the skin, it does occlude it a little bit and help, um, you know, keep the background noise out. I mean, I'm almost close to a five out of five when it comes to that. I can hear very, very well. I mean, I work outside and I work by highways and stuff. It can be a little difficult to hear, but I can still hear it. And at least the lung sounds aren't that difficult. That sounds, that's a different story. Versatility, again, I'm going to give this a five out of five. I can connect this to the streamer through direct audio through the cord and it goes right to my hearing aid. You can do it, you can connect the Think Lab to earbuds, uh, loudspeakers, to uh, headphones. I mean, this thing has a lot of options to go. I mean, it's just really, really a cool stethoscope. I love this thing. I really don't have any cons because it, it meets all my needs. And as you mentioned, you wanted me to talk about the price well, then maybe that might be a, a little bit on the con side. It's a $499 stethoscope. My streamer was $250 like yours, Echo. And it was, um, so that's a pretty $500, plus, so it's $750 for my setup. But it's by far superior to any other setup that I've used. That's it. And I'm going to refer to the iPad for the questions. What hearing aids do you use? I use the Bonic Paradise, has Bluetooth in them. What setup do you use in clinical practice? I use this stethoscope streaming right to the phone through Bluetooth because my hearing aid has Bluetooth in them. Share the pros and cons. So we're gonna have that picture up there for a satisfaction score. Okay, all right. So the first thing I wanna cover is wearability. As Echo T coil mentioned, I wear it around my neck just like she does. It sits on my neck like this and I'll take it off just so I can put the stethoscope on the chest, but I don't use the actual earpiece at all. I can do the same thing like Echo key coil can do is that I can take it off like this and put it in my pocket. And so that's the wearability. I agree with Echo key coil, <laughs> trying to keep that straight. You know, this is the only way you can wear it. You can either put it in your pocket or put it around your neck. There are another no other options to wear it. This does get heavy around your neck after a while. It can be a little heavy on your on your neck. <laughs> and I also agree that when I detach the stethoscope itself, that this is a little awkward in your pocket. It doesn't, it's not small like the Think Lab, which I think is really tiny. It's pretty nice. This is pretty big. Connectivity. You know, connectivity is a three out of five for me. You know, I think I we are in the same satisfaction score. I mean, it has no problem connecting, but you always have to have your phone with you. Charging and battery life, you know, I'm going to give it a four out of five. Keep my phone charged all the time. I've used this quite a bit. The battery life seems to last a couple days for me anyway. Noisy environment, I would give it a three out of five. For pros, it does have noise cancellation on the Echo app itself. I have used it and have found that it does help and it blocks out the background noise. However, you know, again, if you're in a really loud area, like by the street or a house, 
highway, you, it's it's difficult to hear with any stethoscope. And it doesn't do good in very loud environment. As far as the cost goes, I'll cover that, Dee Dee, is that this stethoscope was $349, so say $350, and um, that's it. That's all I have to pay. I don't have to pay for anything extra. But my hearing aids are another story. I mean, those hearing aids cost me quite a bit. So this is a pricey overall thing we have to do anyway. But the phone, you always have to have a phone. So I wouldn't include that like Echo T-Coil said as well. So this is $349 plus my hearing aids, which are $6,000, yada, yada, yada. And the iPad tray right here. Okay, so referring to our questions here, what hearing aids are you using? I have the same uh, Farnak Paradise as or Blue has Bluetooth in them. What setup do you use in clinical practice? I use the Hagibus Bluetooth adapter. It's this thing here that I have in my hand, and it connects to the Think Lab stethoscope just like that. And that's that's essentially it right there. That's my setup, and it has Bluetooth connecting directly to my Bluetooth hearing aid. I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of this setup. We're going to put that scale back up on the screen. Yeah, okay, great. Wearability, this is all I have. This is a four out of five. It, you know, maybe I would give it a five out of five, but it's four to five because it's really small and this is it. This is all I have to do. You know, I can put it in my pocket, that's it. <laughs> There's really no cons for that. Connectivity, well, I have to say I would have to give that a two out of five just because it every time I need to use the stethoscope, I have found that I've had to pair each time. I have to turn off my hearing aids, turn them back on, and then turn on the stethoscope, the Hagibus Bluetooth adapter, then my hearing aids, keep it closed, and it connects. So every time, that's not a good thing. Charging and battery life. Think Lab is rock on. Like they, they, it lasts me a week, just like Think T Coil said, it lasts me a whole week. The Hagibus, you have to charge it every 24 for hours. It doesn't last more than that. I mean, it might die down a little before that. So it doesn't have a lot of power. It's pretty small. So it's really not, it's only $50 for this thing. So I wouldn't think that it would be something that would charge for, you know, you could charge it for a whole week, you know. <laughs> Noisy environment. I, I can hear perfectly fine with this thing. You know, it does have that, you know, you press it against the skin. It does kind of occlude it. So it gets rid of the background noise. There is no options for reducing that. So that's a con. Um, you have the volume on here so you can lower it, increase it, you have your heart for you know high pitches and low sounds and there's a lot of things you can do with just the face itself and all these little buttons to kind of help you with any kind of noisy environment. I think it's fine. Versatility. I would give that a four out of five just like I think T Coil said is that it connects to so many things. Look at this it connects to an adapter, a Bluetooth adapter, it will connect to headphones, ear plugs, loudspeaker, all kinds of stuff so it has a lot of options to connect it on though i wish there was um a better option for bluetooth connectivity you know having to pair it every single use yikes uh, the cost of it, but yeah, the Think the Think Labs is about four hundred and ninety nine dollars, and the Hagibus was fifty dollars. So yeah, that's all that is. I, you know, as far as the cost goes, I would say the con is is that it is a hefty price tag. Not a lot of people can pay, you know spend four hundred and ninety nine dollars for a stethoscope. If you know, especially with people who have hearing loss and have to buy hearing aids, you know, hearing aids can go from three thousand to six thousand dollars for a pair of hearing aids. A lot of people cannot afford that, and and buy a stethoscope at the same time that's another $499 yeah it's a little hefty but you know it would be nice if it had some programs to help with people with hearing loss maybe there are maybe there's some funding out there we should research it before we get to the judges final vote who's going to be the winner and the best setup here we're going to ask the audience or the viewers to go ahead and comment below what type of hearing loss do you have? Do you have mild, to moderate, severe, profound, or anything in between? And also, what type of hearing aids do you wear? Do you wear behind the ear hearing aids or completely in the canal, cochlear implants? Tell us below. Now for the judges' vote. Mike and Joe, have you come up with your vote? Go ahead and tell the audience or the viewers, what is your vote? We're thinking about labs. And the winner is Think T-Coil. Yay, Think T-Coil. <laughs> ah! 
Okay, so the winner is Think T Coil. So that is Tink, 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 Tink. That's Think Lab Stethoscope. That goes from your hearing aid to your streamer directly to the Think Lab itself. And you get direct audio for all bodily sounds and blood pressure without a problem. And thank you all again for coming today. Really appreciate your time. Judges, thank you very much. So there you have it. That's the end of the video. If you like this content, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want to subscribe, please do. And if you want to know about future videos, go ahead and hit the bell notification. I'll be making more videos coming up. Oh yeah, they're going to be great. Take care. Bye.